this guide is more or less revisiting what others have said and more because I get people asking me questions in which they can't find answers to. I'll do my best to answer them and be as informative as I can be. I'm gonna be blunt. You will need a modest switch to do this. Also, you will need an app like Tinfoil to install the NSP files for the NSO apps and their updates. This should be your first step. How you get those files is up to you. That being said, I also want to disclose some possible problems. When you are ready to install said NSP files, make sure they are named correctly because if the file name has certain characters in them, it will be read as zero bytes and you won't be able to install them. As proof of this, the Sega Genesis and Nintendo 64 show zero bytes available, yet the other file has a size shown. Just change the file names to something that would work like NSO N64 app, NSO N64 update, or something like that. Something simple to identify what you want to install and for the console to properly recognize. Now that it is fixed, install them. This is where you'll need to do a little more work. If you haven't linked your account somehow, I'll show you how. If you did, great. Otherwise, you'll have to spoof it. The reason you have to do this is because the switch is modded and some people like myself have disconnected it entirely from the internet. There is no possible way to link your account online the normal way. So I will link it offline through Homebrew. Enter the Homebrew menu by starting a program and hold R. You'll be taken to the Homebrew menu. Make sure to have Link Alho installed. If you don't, add it because it allows you to spoof your account by linking your Switch account offline. I left the link in the description. Visit that link from GBA Temp and download the file. The searches are pretty easy to understand. Once done, the process to link your account offline is easy and straightforward, but you will have to reboot your console. I'm using Hikate and I'm sure there are people who use different bootloaders and whatnot. Just boot up to your custom firmware and that is it. You should be able to boot up the NSO apps you installed. I am pretty ahead here as you can see the games I added, but for the purpose of this video, it should only consist of the games provided by the app. Make sure to test out all the apps that they work and that the games are playable. Please note the Nintendo Entertainment System, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, and Sega Genesis are more straightforward to do. This process is virtually the same for the consoles mentioned. This section applies to them strictly because of it. The Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64 require more steps and each separate sections dedicated to them. I should also disclose I am only using US ROMs, not European or Japanese ROMs. I am also using the American versions of the NSO apps too. Wherever you get your games, that is up to you. With that out of the way, I left a link to Dr. Kuma's Cave Database Manager. This is the program you'll use to customize your NSO. Get it, unzip it, and leave it somewhere on your computer where you can easily find it. If you don't have a program to unzip it, there is also a download link below that too. Use either 7-zip or WinRAR to open up the downloaded zip file. It doesn't matter which you use. Now unzip the downloaded file and leave it somewhere easy for you to find like your desktop. I have set up a practice example to show you how it's done. I have my games available alongside BoxArt. First, check up which version your NSO app is. In my case, it is currently 6.9.0. Start up the Cave Database program. It should be empty. Go to File, New, NES Online, and select the correct version that matches the one that you have. After that, select a location because a folder with your custom games will be made there. Add your games by going to File, Add Game, Import ROM. Select your game and that's it. To give those games box art, go to one of the games, right click it and select New Cover Art to make it look more complete. BoxArt can be downloaded online. Google searches are fine, but I left multiple links to multiple collections to make it easier for you. Once you are done with the BoxArt for your custom games, finish up by going to File and click Save. By doing so, your database will be ready to transfer. Remember how we had to select a destination earlier for the database folder to be made? The folder with numerical digits and some letters is a database we just created. 
This is a database with our custom games with their box art. Each console has different names. As you can see, it is a mixture of numbers and letters. The information that you see on screen will be left in the description for anyone wanting to revisit it. Now adding those games to your NSO is a matter of transferring. I recommend connecting your switch to your PC via tinfoil. Just drag the database folder to the Atmosphere Contents folder in the SD card. Boot up the app and you'll see the games added. Test out the games to see they work and hopefully they do. You can't keep adding games to your heart's content as it read online that some people have created databases that contain over 100 games. Keep in mind however, this is emulation and not all games will run properly. There are compatibility issues, so not all games will run perfect. In fact, a ROM hack I added wouldn't boot up for me when I did it for the Sega Genesis. Now for the Super Nintendo NSO app. Simply installing the NSP files won't be enough. You need a full unlock key alongside, which is what the IPS files you see here. You cannot install it. It will only be open in tinfoil. What you do with that file is different. You will need to properly place this file in your SD card to play custom games. But before you do that, the IPS file also needs to be based on the NSO version you have. I currently have version 3.6 and the IPS file I have matches that specific version. I left a link for you to get a copy of said IPS file. The link says obsolete for an older version of the K database manager and it goes up to 3.7. That is fine because the Cave Database Manager that I'm using is 1.5.0. It works fine for me. Another thing too, the current Super Nintendo update version is 4.0. I have had no luck finding any full unlock IPS file for that version. That is why I'm stuck with 3.6. Once you have your IPS unlock file, all you have to do is move it. The file belongs in the pathway atmosphere xf underscore patches SNES Online Full Unlock. Place it in there. The next issue to cover is the need to convert the ROM files. Normally, SNES ROMs are either SFC or SMC format, and that would be enough for the flash cartridges and RetroArch. But because Nintendo uses a different format known as SF ROM for their emulation, the former won't be enough. Luckily, there is a program that converts SFC and SMC to SF ROM. A link to get that program is in the description. Get it. It is pretty easy to use. Go to File and open up any SFC or SMC ROM you have. Save as Switch SF ROM. And with that, the extra steps are done. You can't continue on with building your custom library by adding the SF ROMs because the process is ultimately the same. At this point, you should be familiar with the process. Of course, once done, test out the games as usual. The Nintendo 64 requires less work. You can add the games, but you should look at the compatibility list to see which games work. Aside from that, the games will need a Metapack DTZ file such as Mischief Makers. I'll use that game as an example. I have added that game to the database. Because the DTZ file is present, Download it. Right click Mischief Makers in the database to open folder location. Get the DTZ file and copy it there. Lastly, rename the DTZ file to match the game file name. Once done, save and copy the database into the SD card and test out the game. The added game should work but that is not always the case. Smash Remix did not work for me. Other people have got it to work, which means I did something wrong. Mischief Makers on the other hand is playable, which for me is good enough. That's about it for adding custom games to your NSO apps. I did skim over a couple details like adding a description for those games, but I felt it was unnecessary. I also did not want to delve into gameplay because I want to get straight to the point. Lastly, I plan on making a follow up video because I foresee people run into problems. A troubleshoot video seems likely because there are some things that I did not go over 
And I'm sure that I'm going to have to answer some of those questions in the comment section below because people just tend to ask away. Other than that, that's it. And thank you for watching.